myopathy. Please welcome Dr. Ayaz Malik. So, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. So, much like Muhammad, I'm going to take you on a journey. Um, a journey that goes from Manchester to Qatar, um, Doha. And I'm going to talk to you about a technique which was born in Manchester, but actually probably learned how to walk in Manchester, but began to run in Qatar. Um, and this technique, I believe, is a very powerful technique because it allows me to image nerves. Now, what are nerves? So nerves are central to everything we do. They allow us to perceive the outside world, they allow us to think, and they allow me to walk. So if those nerves aren't working, or they're damaged, then there is a major consequence. So, this works. One in four people will have some kind of problem with their nerves. Those problems can arise when nerves get damaged, either in the periphery or in the brain. And the consequence is the common diseases that we're all aware of. Somebody in our family is touched by dementia, by stroke, by Parkinson's disease, by schizophrenia, by multiple sclerosis, by epilepsy. So this is the brain. Inside it, you see there are nerve fibers. That is impossible to image. We have MR scans that allow you to image the whole brain, but they won't allow you to image the actual nerve fibers. And what we have is a technique that gives us a surrogate of what's going on in the brain, but also in the periphery. When nerves get damaged, we can pick this up with this technique. And this is how simple the technique is. But I don't want you to believe me, because you know, I'm just Professor Malik. Who you will believe is Bill Gates, okay? So Bill Gates, as you know, is a very successful man. And he was asked to put money into dementia research. He agreed to put $30 million into the diagnostic for dementia. And you know, he didn't say we need to put money into new drugs. What he thought was the major, major, uh, shall we say, roadblock to developing new re um, treatments for dementia was a reliable, affordable, and accessible biomarker which has the potential to revolutionize how we approach Alzheimer's disease. So what is he talking about? He's talking about the ability to be able to diagnose the disease before it presents. So before your 60 or 70 year old relative begins to lose their memory, you already are able to image and show that damage. So can we do that? Well, we believe we have a technique called corneal confocal microscopy, which we haven't invented, but we've actually pioneered the use of it to assess neurodegenerative disease. So this is how simple it is. So you come along to my clinic, and good people like Adnan and Yanis and George will, will actually undertake this test. It's as simple as this. The machine just touches the front of your cornea, and it images the nerve fibers in your cornea. And if you scan through like a CT scan, it actually images the nerve fibers. And so, using this technique, what we did, I did, in 2003, I came up with this crazy idea. And actually, Mohammed talked about um, being ridiculed and, and pulling up with, so when you come up with something new and innovative, the old guard will always say to you, you're stupid. Right, and the key is holding your nerve and really following what you believe. And so what we did is we showed that in people with diabetes, you can use this technique to assess nerve damage. 
Following that, you can see that we and multiple other groups across the world have been able to show that corneal confocal microscopy can assess peripheral nerve damage, peripheral neuropathies. But what we also have is data that shows, again, challenges dogma. So Parkinson's disease is a disease that most people will say is starts in the brain, somewhere in the brain, and it causes a poverty of movement and it gives you tremor. People would never have thought that you could actually measure nerve damage that's going on in the brain in the cornea. But actually, we showed that you can. Next, so we got a Michael J. Fox Foundation grant um, to, to develop this as a surrogate endpoint. Next comes multiple sclerosis, which we know is more prevalent in gutter um, and is also very difficult to diagnose until it's probably too late. And again, I can't, actually I'll, I'll put my hand up. When Yanis came to me and said, we ought to look at people with multiple sclerosis, I actually said to him, don't be stupid. It can't possibly be true that you can look at the corneal nerves and detect what's going on in the brain. But actually, I was proven wrong, because this is what you see in an MR scan, this is what you see in corneal confocal microscopy. This is a healthy control, this is what you see in people with severe multiple sclerosis. And we have data that shows that you can actually if you measure the nerves, there is damage. And the last and most relevant bit is dementia. So again, dementia is, you know, you lose your memory, you lose your ability to cognitively function. And you can measure that using questionnaires. But the problem is that sometimes it's too late. People have already got dementia. And what you want to do is pick the disease up early. And so what we've used is corneal confocal microscopy. And you see, control, mild cognitive impairment. 10 years before people are gonna get dementia, we are already picking up nerve fiber loss. And you can see that in the mild cognitive impairment and the dementia patients. And we believe that that is going to allow us to make the diagnosis early, but also test therapies at a much earlier stage. And we hope to go to the ADDF, to the Diagnostic Accelerator, to Bill Gates Foundation, to secure money to develop this test further. So, what started off as a crazy idea in Manchester has actually now really kind of taken a force of its own and there are probably 300 centers across the world that are now using CCM. So in terms of innovation, um, what I'm looking for, if anybody's got money out there, is to build a corneal confocal microscope that is handheld that doesn't have to touch the cornea. And if we can do that, I can tell you, we can retire. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mark. That was amazing. And enough for the fact that these diseases are very well spread, especially here in the region. I think maybe 10 or 20 people of those standing here have suffered, or one of their loved ones has suffered from this. And as you said, it was always diagnosed late. So having something like this would be life-changing. Thank you. So now we'll open the floor for questions.